Hello everybody, Nick Tuttle here at Misty Music Studio, and today we are going to learn how to set up a chord mode on the Syntact. Um, so, fast forward through some boring stuff, like naming the pattern. And setting up a chord machine for every machine. Okay, so we have chords set up for all of our top eight digital machines, tracks, whatever you want to call them. Um, we're going to set up key. We're we'll just use the key of A minor because it's the easiest. It goes A, B, C, D, E, F, G in that order, and I'll tell you what types of chords we need to put in here. So let's go to our trigger. Track one is going to be A minor. Track two. Technically, B diminished is in the key, but I don't really like diminished chords. Most people don't. They sound kind of icky. So we're just going to go straight to C major, which is after B diminished. Track three is going to be D minor. Track four is going to be E minor. And then we have F major, and then we have G major, and then after G, uh, it's back to A again. So. Um, you could do like seven chords, you could do A minor seven, you could do C major seven, that's a good one. Um, I am going to do F major seven, because that's in key. And I like that one. Also, these are really confusingly named. Uh, I believe the capital M7 is a major third with a dominant 7, which is a really crappy thing about music theory. And all of music theory, saying nothing implies major. So just 7 with nothing should imply major 7. However, it doesn't, I guess, because of the way that humans have arbitrarily decided the way that things should be. Um, so, yeah, it's dominant 7, it's a flat 7. So you have to make sure you do major 7, which is actually you know, the major seven, it's kind of annoying. The cool thing about um, this though, despite, I mean, it's not the syntax fault that music theory terminology is stupid. We can do a minor third with a major seven. So that's what the little m and then the m little m for minor, maj for major seven. So minor third, major seven. And then, oh yeah, I need to set the trig uh, f also. So obviously the minor third, uh, in, a, in the F chord would be out of key in this key, but I kind of like it. Obviously we need to go through and set our amp time, so let's see. I really actually kind of hate the decay shortcut control. I would much rather just it follow one thing or the other. It's like annoying to have both. I guess the decay overrides the release or vice versa, who knows. Okay, so we've got that. Um, another thing I just, I do like to do is, it's totally up to you, if you wanna make pads. Okay. Let's see, so we've got that set up. Yeah, we can just kind of play with these. And then if you don't want them to go all ascending, Here's some more tricks we can do. If you don't want them to go just in ascending order, 
Um, here's something kind of fun. We can tune, first of all, if you hold a uh, track and turn a knob, it changes that value for all tracks. It's, and if you have the same machines, that's very easy because you have the same options. So we can just tune uh, everything up an octave. Right, so that's kind of nice. And then why don't we tune this one down? That's uh, cooler, I think. We're getting there, we're getting there. Um, let's see here. Here's another thing. Um, I think the chord, the chord machine needs reverb. So I, again, just hold track, put some reverb on all these. I also like to set up the reverb. It's set up by default pretty okay for like fast tempo electronic music. Um, I just like big reverb, so something like that. And here's fun, you can do different inversions of the same chord. So play with your inversions, they really make the chords sound different. Uh, very cool. That's this little balance guy. Let's see. I don't know, I think it's sounding pretty good. Obviously you can change the, um, the wave. So if I hold... First I'm going to save this because I'm actually kind of happy with where it's at. Uh, don't forget to save your projects, folks. So if I scroll through the wave... Let's maybe like get something close to a square. I think I'm very happy. Um, another, here's a fun thing, just a little trick that I like to do. Uh, if we, again, hold track, this I guess should change on everything, right? So holding track, we're going to assign an uh, LFO to tune. Yes. And we're not going to set it to go very deep. Just very subtle. Maybe we give it a fade in. Something I love, a holdover from the Juno. <laughs> Thanks, Roland. Right, we were setting up an LFO. I got a phone call. Let's see. And it's real slow, huh? So let's crank up that multiplier. Great. I must have forgot to hold track at some point. I think I'll do one more just as a quick easy example. I just wanted to give a second example of how to use this chord type mode. Not just, you know, giving you all the chords and key and saying have fun play with that, but let's say you have an actual chord progression. So off the top of my head, here's one that I like. Um, 
First, let's set up our chord machine. I'm only gonna use four tracks because I'm just gonna use four chords. It's not gonna be that crazy of a progression. You could get crazy with your progressions if you want to. So I'm just gonna go here, set up our machines again. So we have four chords. They're identical again. Let's do that progression I wanted to do. I wanna start with D sharp minor. Uh, actually, it needs to be this one. Okay, D sharp minor. And then A sharp minor. And then B uh, major. And then C sharp major. Okay. And our, of course, our K needs to. where it was. And then I would like to do minor. So why don't we copy? Can I copy this track or does that copy? I think it just copies the sequence if I copy a track. I don't really remember. Yeah, it copies a pattern. I don't remember how to copy the sound, so we're just, you know what? I know I said I was gonna do simple and just do four uh, chords or whatever, but you know how it is. You get to making something, you decide that you don't want it to be four chords anymore. We're gonna use B minor. Uh, it's not in the key. Again, it's just one of those, I like it. Okay, so that's going to be, and then this one has to be major. And then of course, you know, max out of the, or like make the release pretty long so that the decay works here. And I don't know, let's pick a cooler wave. I mean, this is the, the default sound sounds really good, but it sounds like the default sound. You know what I mean? Ooh. Let's do a, an almost triangle. Oh, I like that. Well, um, I don't know if I explained everything there is to explain about setting up chords and uh, doing chord progressions on the Syntact. I mean, obviously you could uh, use the sequencer, uh, you can use the MIDI roll on your computer, there's so many ways to record and write. Um, if it was me using it in this way, I probably wouldn't use any sort of sequencer, I would just live play it. I guess I don't really have anything else for now, so... Let's uh, let's call it here and have fun playing with your chords. Let me know in the comments below if you end up making anything cool with uh, this type of setup or using it in your music. I would love to know and listen and see what people are doing with this. Once again, this has been Nick Tuttle at Misty Music Studio. Hoping you have an excellent day.